Welcome to this Goldstormer Pro Masterclass where we show Pro subscribers how to make the most of their subscriptions. Today we're going to look at how to streamline accountability management in incubators in just an hour or two to support and challenge fast-moving startup and growth businesses without the herding cats pain. You're in the right place if you run or manage an incubator or startup hub, if you're a mentor or coach that works in or alongside an incubator, if you use ad hoc tracking tools but find it's time intensive to keep up to date. You're in the right place if part of what you do is showing how funding for support is having an impact, or if you've a diverse range of businesses to support and guide all at different stages. You're also in the right place if managing accountability feels like herding cats, it takes three times as long as it should. You're in the right place if you work with businesses that don't always share normal business hours, or if you want to start an incubator, growth hub or similar support programme and want to avoid some of the possible early pitfalls. By way of introduction, my name's Keith Shering. I've worked with teams of all sizes and their achievements for over 20 years. I consult on both process and technology strategy and its implementation. I work with small companies, national businesses and global companies with several thousand employees. I'm the creator of Goldstormer.com and the work we've done for charity and with application design has been recognised in a number of awards. And here's what you'll learn by hanging around for the next hour or so. The seven steps for streamlined accountability. One simple way to work with businesses that never seem to find the time to create the goals they agree with you. The two biggest benefits of user plus upgrades. One simple way to build a documentation trail a Kickstarter guide to using progress reports, and how and why it makes sense to centrally manage your subscriptions. Please make sure that you do stay right to the end because I'm going to show you how to get Goldstormer Pro free for 60 days and I'll show you how to get these slides so that you can get started right now. I'd like to take a few minutes just to share my story and tell you how Goldstormer came into being. Like many people, I suppose, I started out in a standard corporate career, working diligently, uh, being a good team player and working on my annual objectives, uh, usually working harder in the fortnight before my performance review, of course. And in one of those classic paradoxes, the more I learned and the more depth I went into, the fewer the people I ended up speaking to, the, the double-edged sword of being an industry specialist, I suppose. Now, at heart, I'm a people person, so I had a bit of a word with myself when I started to realise what was happening. You know, that thing where you go on a two-day conference which is focused solely on the ins and outs of automatic electricity meter reading, which can be genuinely fascinating, but you realise that in the past two years you spent more time with some of the people at the conference than several members of your own family. So at that point, I had to decide where next. And I knew then that I needed to start my own business to take control of work and not the other way around, so that I could get out of life what I wanted. And of course, being a man of great action, I then continued to know that I needed to start my own business for another seven years, whilst I hummed and hawed about whether I really had what it took to be that most mythical of beasts, the entrepreneur. I was held back by fear and insecurity, in other words. Then a random meeting helped me make my decision. I ended up in a long conversation with a venture capitalist who was lost in the middle of Cambridge, which is where I was working during the dot-com boom. And in between the detailed directions and the talk of internet-connected water meters, we discussed a great many things that might or might not happen with this new internet thing. And as he turned to leave and go to his hotel, he thrust his card into my hand and he said, you know, if you ever want to join a startup, consider giving me a call. Now, I didn't normally get propositioned like that by strange men in the street after discussions about automated meter reading, so that got me thinking about whether I might be onto something with the idea generation side of the conversation. And that conversation started the ball rolling as I thought about the implications in the bus home that evening. What if I just did it and started the journey now? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? So I made a great leap, like a bounding gazelle, or perhaps more like a clumsy squirrel monkey. But anyway, full of energy and confidence, I decided to systemise my knowledge and run my own consultancy. But realistically, I knew that my overall business management experience was just too narrow. So I jumped from one of Europe's biggest technology companies and landed in a small but ambitious local business where I could both learn and make an impact. A positive one, hopefully. I built teams, recruited staff, built customer relationships, learned loads, fed into strategy and helped grow the business year after year. 
After five intense but fun years, I decided that the time was right to really face the fear and do it anyway. I handed in my notice. I had a month's worth of salary in the bank. It was 2009, the deepest part of the recession here in the UK. My company car went back and an unexpected tax bill arrived. Yet I was certainly experiencing the feel the fear part of it. And then I discovered how many business people were willing to be incredibly generous with their time, experience and their ideas when someone starts a new venture. One particular sage said to me, you know, starting your own business is great. You only ever work half days. Pick any 12 hours you want. And yes, this time convinced me more than ever of the challenge of balancing the running of an effective and efficient business with maintaining a level of personal contact, understanding and service that I needed to differentiate myself with clients. And here's another paradox. When people love who you are and what you do, you start getting busy. Until the point when you're too busy. But when you try to grow by having other people, your customers still want you. And that's why, to help me meet this challenge and grow my own business, I decided to systemize parts of what I knew into an app so that people were buying my experience and my process, not just my time. I knew that would take a serious amount of thought, money, time and effort, but I also knew that to grow I needed to invest and this would be my bet. That platform became Goldstormer and after developing the first version I enthusiastically showed it to a hand-picked audience for some straight feedback. And as I demoed it and shared my future plans, a common theme emerged in the feedback. People asked me, hey, I want to use all of this as the platform with my clients, can I do that now? And it was then, listening to the comments and the questions, the discussions and seeing what made people get fired up and enthusiastic, that I realised that this had to be a platform for mentors and managers, not just an app for users. Oh sure, I was excited about the possibilities, but there goes another year, I thought, silently weeping inside as I mentally calculated the effort and cost involved in adding all the new stuff. But I did it. I put my head down, I broke the journey down into tasks and developed new tools. And in fact, Goldstorm ended up being recognised in the National 2014 UK Mobile and App Awards as a finalist. And what's more, I achieved all of this whilst I was still doing my consulting work, helping managers and teams deliver big goals and great results. With Goldstormer, my vision is to help people unleash awesome, to let people's plans and goals take flight. It's also about multiplication. If Goldstormer can help more coaches, more advisors, more mentors and more managers, then they in turn can help more and more people achieve what matters to them. It's a sort of benign chain reaction, but without the yellow radiation suits and mutated sea bass. And it's worth remembering, because I'm also a mentor and manager, this is my solution too. It's, it's solving the same problems for me and my knowledge as it will for you and your experience if you're a coach or a mentor like me. And because I'm just like so many other people, maybe just like you, I need to see a few key benefits. My consulting business, though based on knowledge and experience, needs to be effective, repeatable and efficient. And when I manage teams, I want clarity of accountability and responsibility, and I want regular progression and growth. I need my clients to execute and achieve on the advice, based on the advice that I give them, so that they value my services and ultimately pay my bills. And I don't want to spend lots of time cajoling and chasing and becoming the enemy. I want the system to lay the truth bare so that I can provide the positive support and motivation. Be assured, I have the scars here. I do really know what it's like to start and grow a people-centric, experience-driven business that thrives in personal service. And I'm excited for you to benefit from Goldstormer too. I want to share with you some ideas and practical suggestions for using Goldstormer now. And I want also to wish you uh, success in using them for your own business, so I'll tell you at the end how and why to upgrade to a Goldstormer Pro subscription. Okay, let's have a look at Goldstormer in action. We're going to have a look at how we can set up accountability groups and support startups and growth companies, innovation hubs and so on. And we'll show you how the tools that you've got in Goldstormer can give you a more consistent approach to providing this support, improve the execution of people delivering on their goals and help you track how people are doing whilst you save time. So these are the seven steps that we're going to go through in some detail, but let's just cover them quickly just now. 
we'll be talking about how you set up pro accounts for the managers and mentors and other key staff who lead and guide your businesses. I'll show you how to set up groups, one or more groups, for accountability. Um, businesses can be member of it can be members of one or more groups so that it allows you to organize things the way that you need to. So we'll show you how to set those up. I'll show you how you take your existing web resources like webinars and videos, PDFs, forms, templates, things like that, and link those as group resources. I'll show you how people can join accountability groups and how you can manage the membership of those groups to make sure that people are in the right place. I'll show you how to take goals that have been set with your businesses and link those to both groups and individual mentors so that you can track accountability in a couple of different ways. I'll show you how to generate progress reports for the businesses who are individually mentored. And then lastly, I'll show you how to send brief update messages to all the members of individual groups to make it more efficient to communicate. The first thing we need to do is set up a pro account for you and any of the leaders or managers who are working within the incubator. So the way we do that is by logging in with our standard account and then either look for the upgrade button over here at the top right or under the tools tab there's a bigger upgrade button there. And what you then do is click on that button, you'll see the upgrade screen here and we are looking for the pro subscription. And you can either try for 60 days here, or when you're ready, click the Upgrade to Pro button and you'll see a PayPal screen where you can put in your details, buy the subscription, and then when the confirmation comes through, go back into Goldstormer, log out, and log back in again, and you'll pick up your new upgraded status. So let me log in again. So now just to confirm, you can see that because I'm a pro, there's no upgrade button anymore. And when I look in the Tools tab, I can now see the Info Hub and Pro Hub buttons. Now these are what I need, the Pro Hub is what I need to manage the incubator businesses. Now what you'll need to do is make sure that each one of the managers, coaches or mentors who's going to work with the businesses in your incubator or hub have a pro account. Now. They can buy individual licenses like I've just shown you there with the upgrade button or I'm going to show you later how you as the overall manager of the incubator or hub can manage license subscription agreements so that you can provide licenses to other people. Let's use the Pro Hub to set up some accountability groups. To do that, I open up the Tools tab and click on the Pro Hub button. Here we are in the Pro Hub, and I'm going to dig into the Groups menu and then Manage Groups, and this is where I'm going to start creating my groups. Now, the way that you organize groups uh, can really depend on what you want to do with the businesses in your incubator. Uh, a business, uh, an account, can be a member of one or more groups so that you can have some flexibility there. You might want to have a group, for example, um, related to business size, so a group for small businesses, for medium and for larger businesses. You might want to have groups per industry, um, maybe tech or bio or financial services or whatever it is that, uh, that matches the, the the groupings of businesses that you have within your program. You might also want to have things like the maturity of the business. Are they pre-startup? Are they pre-funding? Are they an active startup? Are they in growth phase and so on? You might have different programs that you operate within your hub and you want to create a group for each of those as well. Uh, and lastly, you might want to create a group for the companies who are being mentored or coached by individual mentors or coaches. So let's create a group for pre-startups. We're going to go with maturity here. So pre-startup. And the purpose here is to help uh, new uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs uh, define their new businesses. And we'll leave the status at draft at the moment. Um, and we'll tick findable so that when we make the group live, people will be able to search for this group and find it rather than relying on me sending them a link to the group. So here we are, a pre-startup group uh, to help new entrepreneurs. We're going to save that. There we go. We now have a card 
for that group, I'm going to create another group here, which is for growth phase. And this is to support established startups as they move to the next stage. Uh, I'm, we're happy that one can just be live. Oops, pick the right thing. And we'll make it findable and we'll save that. So now you can see I have the two cards within my group screen for my pre-startups, which is draft, and my growth phase, which is live. Um, I can go in and edit the groups here, so when I'm comfortable here, I can turn that to live and update it. Uh, so now I've got two live groups at the moment with no members. I'll show you how people will join these later. Uh, and also you have a, a link here, which you can, if you right uh, click on or whatever the equivalent is on your machine, you can copy the link address and email that to people. And if you do that, what happens is it shows a, a summary screen with just a random picture on it of what the group is all about. Uh, and this is incidentally where people can request to join as well. But we'll, we'll go into that uh, in a second. It may well be that there are existing information resources which you have, uh, which you've generated within your um, incubator or your support hub, your organization, which are related to your program. And um, you, what you want to do is signpost those to people, to businesses, to business owners, when it's a time that's useful to them. So what you can do is click on the Manage Resources uh, link here within each of your groups and add resource links. Now, these could be things like um, websites. So this could be advice, website, and we'll set that to live. And we'll put the web address in. And save that. Now, these are links which are always available to members of these groups. And this is really useful within incubators and startup hubs uh, and so on because it tends to be the case uh, in our experience that the businesses who are working in, in such environments, um, they're, they're often out during the day raising funds or developing the product or speaking to potential customers and pitching what they do. And so a lot of the administrative and organization and business running stuff happens in evenings or, or out of normal business hours. So having resources which are available to them just through simple web links 24-7 can be really advantageous. So that's why resources um, attached to groups can be really quite useful. Uh, you can, if you wish, set um, expiry dates as well uh, once you've saved resource links, but we'll not worry too much about that. So now we have um, some resources which are related to my pre-startup group. I can have as many of those as I want. So if I'm a user, how do I get engaged with a group? So if I'm the owner of uh, an incubator business, or a business within the incubator that's being supported and mentored, how do I get involved with the groups um, that are related to that incubator? Well, the first thing I can do, of course, is respond to that emailed link that I showed you before. So if I, if I was the business owner and received an email saying, here's the, the, the link for the, um, the group, I would just go in, uh, I would click on that link, and I would enter my request uh, to join. But if I didn't have that link, how would I go about doing it? Well, groups are about people, so we go into the People tab, Click on groups and then we would search for uh, some of the keywords that might tell us um, about these groups. So I'm going to try start and there we go. So pre-startup, uh, that's where I'm at. So I have a quick look here. This gives me a little bit of information. Yeah, it helps new entrepreneurs define their new business. Um, the, the group owner there would be the, the person who's created the group, and I know them, of course, as the, the, um, the manager of the incubator. I could stick in the purpose here. I could have uh, the name of the incubator or the name of the program or whatever it is that would serve as a keyword for me to help searching. So um, my re request to join here is I am a member of the incubator and I request to join. That's fine. Request submitted and I can actually see my, uh, my joining requests in here. And you can see that uh, I haven't had a response yet. If I want to, see there's a, a random request, I can delete that, uh, click again, and that deletes. So I now only have my one uh, request to join um, the pre-startup group. So I can manage my joining requests until they're approved. And um, I can check what groups I belong to here, none that I belong to.
Uh, so I now have to wait until the manager of the group has approved my membership so that um, we, we don't have a situation where any random person can join. You're in control of it as the owner of the group. So how does that work in practice? Well, if I as the group owner go back to the Pro Hub here and go into my groups menu, quite simply look at the joining requests. And here I can see that um, I've got that request that came through. Now what I can do is I can say um, I need your uh, forms completed, please, and set to pending. Now, what mean what that means there is that I'm not yet, uh, or Jane here is not yet a member of my group, but I've communicated with a bit of information there. Now, if I'm Jane, the person requesting here, what I'll then do is go back to my uh, joining requests here. Just reload this, and you can see that there's a response here that I need your forms completed, please. So I can go in and check here regularly to see whether um, I've been request, I've been accepted or not, or whether there's something I need to respond to. Um, most of the time that won't be needed and it's just a straightforward accept or reject. So now going back in as the group owner, I'm going to accept this person and you can see there are no more outstanding requests. So the idea behind this uh, separate screen here is that in one place you see all of the requests for all of your groups. So this is the first thing you would check in the morning. Is there anything that I need to respond to? Now, because I accepted the request, I should find that if I look in Manage Groups, there we go. Jane is now accepted, a member of the incubator. I can, if I wish, set them back to submitted or remove them from the group permanently if there's been any sort of problem or if I need to ask extra questions. But fundamentally, what I've got in this card here is a list of all of the people that I've accepted into this group. If I go back to uh, Jane's screen here, so this is the person who's requested to join and have a look at my groups, I can now see that I've got no outstanding requests, but now I belong to a group. And this is also where I can find my resource links. So remember we added uh, a link to the advice website? Well, this is the where the, the users can see it. So if I ever need any support, or if I um, want to grab some of the template documents or get links to videos that I can use, this is how I do it. I go into my People tab, Groups, the groups I belong to, and then the resource links for each group. I can also leave the group here um, if I've decided that it's not for me. So we've seen how being a member of a group gives me access to useful resource links, uh, but there's more we can do as users of the system. So again, if I'm the owner of a startup business, I can go into my goals, and let's just pick a random one that we've got here, so PRINCE2 certification, and under the settings of the goal, I can now assign this goal to my pre-startup group and update that. Now. What that means to me as a user is, remember that the resources link that we saw when I went through all of the, the group um, menu, the people menu, and then groups. I've now got those group resources here um, from the goal itself. So there we go. That links through to the, the very useful uh, Goalstormer website, of course. Uh, so I'm getting the, the resources here again as well. So that's just a, a shortcut once I've got my goal assigned. I can also, if there's a, a, a specific coach or mentor that I'm working with, I can select them here. So um, I, you can see I've already selected Keith as the coach for this goal uh, and update that. Now, uh, that then means that the coach, the group owner, can see what I'm doing and my progress in this goal here. So this is the one that we've linked, remember, with the pre-startup group and Keith. So here are the steps within this goal, and so they'll Keith, the coach, and the pre-startup group manager, Jane, will be able to see my progress here. I showed you how, as a user, I can take one of my goals and assign it to a group and or to a coach or mentor, to another user who's going to support me. So. If I'm that coach or that group owner, how does that help me? Well, I can go into my groups menu and track user progress. And what this is doing is giving me all of my groups and I can pick the one that I want to use and I have a data table here of the different users progress uh, for the different goals that they've got. 
So here, if I click on the goal title, I can have a look at the progress, the individual step progress, and the overall goal progress, and I can sort things uh, by clicking on the titles and so on. I can search using the fields at the bottom and so on. So if there's a number of uh, different businesses with, with several goals within the group, there'll be obviously several rows in here. Now, as a coach or mentor who's been individually assigned to uh, a user's goals, uh, what I can do is I can go into the goals I'm coached for and see another one of these data tables where I can sort and search and dig into information and hover over and find uh, more data, uh, see in a bit more detail what's going on. So that's one of the options where I can just quickly go in and dig into the data. Or if I want a more structured um view of the data, I can go into progress reports. And this is where for the different users that who I'm, I've got some goals with or a relationship with uh, in terms of groups or what have you, I can click the preview button and see a nicely formatted report which is ready to print or save as a PDF, which summarizes how all the goals are going using this color scheme here. Um, it gives me an indication of the momentum. So this is how engaged I've been, or this user's been with their with their goals. A summary of overdue live and postponed goals, and then detailed digging down into the steps which are past the, with the color coding, or in the future with blue, so that I can uh, hold a, a meaningful review with, in this case, with Jane. Now, I'll explain a little bit later how to interpret this uh, particular report and use it in your conversations. Sometimes you want to send a short update to all the members of a group at one time. Uh, so this is how we do it. We go into the Updates tab and I click on the plus button to add a new message, and then I select my group that I'm interested in. So here's my pre-startups, and I'm going to say we have a new mentor presenting on Tuesday. Please come along. And so I send that message, and you can see it shows up in my update timeline, me sending to the group. We've got a new mentor presenting. Um, it tells me which group it's been sent to. Uh, I can edit it if needs be, or quote it if I want to, to resend it. But basically, that's me now sent that, uh, that message off. So if we have a look at what the user would see, as a group member, uh, what happens when a when Goldstormer detects a new message is you can see that the update tab here goes blue and the, the envelope lights up. Now, I can click on there, and then you can see here we have uh, the new mentor presenting on Tuesday. Please come along. So there we are, the new message to the pre-startup group, ready for me to read. Sometimes when businesses are growing and starting and you've got a, a busy incubation hub or innovation hub, uh, you can find that you, you have a startup business that agrees with you that the accountability goal is a good idea and they know that they need to do it, but they, they just say they're always too busy to enter it. It never percolates up their priority order far enough. So what you can do, and I'm just going to show you this in a second, is you can create the goal for them in your Goalstormer account and then transfer it to them. And what that means is that all they ne then need to do is to respond to an email that comes into their inbox and click one link which transfers the goal to them. And from then on in, what they're doing is receiving their daily or weekly email report uh, which has all of the steps that they agreed with you, which you typed in and entered and then transferred across. And when they do those steps, when the startup does those steps, what they can then do is just click on the link in the email and therefore you can see all the progress within Goalstormer and do all the reports as normal without the startup business having had to create the goal themselves and up, log in and update as they go. So it's a great way to get around businesses that think they're too busy. So let's see that in action. We begin by adding a new goal. So the goal that needs to be done. We could put the information in that we need and set anything that uh, is appropriate here. And once we've done all that, we add the goal. Here it is here. And then to transfer it, I just go to my Tools menu, into the Pro Hub, and under the Users menu, I select Transfer a Goal. And this is where I pick the goal that needs to be done from the list of goals that I've got. And the person I want to transfer it to, I click Transfer this goal, just a confirmation, and there we go. Now what happens is Floella gets an email, and when she accepts that, the goal disappears from my list of goals and is now Floella's. 
We've talked a lot about the benefits of pro subscriptions, but there's also a user plus subscription in Goldstormer, which I think has got two big benefits when you're working with groups of people to educate and train and bring them on. So the first uh, big benefit of User Plus is delegated steps. Now this is where you take an individual step within a goal and you assign that one you assign that one step to a different user. Now, why that can help is it, it illustrates the difference between accountability, which is ownership of the goal, and responsibility, so getting all the steps done. So it can be a useful way to help your people grow and learn how to let go uh, while still retaining control. Uh, that, in turn, feeds into uh, better prioritization and better management of time because instead of trying to do all of the steps in a goal, you can educate the goal, uh, you can sort of encourage the goal owner to delegate some of the steps out to other people, to transfer some of the responsibility, and to, for them to grow their own people as well. There are additional reports within User Plus in the Info Hub console, which is a little bit like the Pro Hub. Uh, and the reason behind these reports is fundamentally about a bit of insight and cooperation, so a mixture of cooperation and competition. So what you can do there is get uh, the User Plus uh, subscribers, so the users who've got User Plus uh, subscriptions can go into the Info Hub and they can have a look at, for example, their goal progress versus the progress of another user, so that you have this inbuilt uh, competition, particularly if you're working with standard goals, so template goals or common goals across a, a group. Uh, and so people can have a look at that and see how am I doing against other people, so it starts to get them self-motivating without you necessarily intervening. So two big benefits, I think, of User Plus. Let me show you how you use them. The easiest way to start is to open the goal that I'm interested in. In this case, we'll take the find the right publisher for my poem. We'll have a look in there, and we can see there's a step in there that perhaps this is not the best use of my time. If I was the mentor for this user, I might be suggesting this is something that you're responsible for, but perhaps you could delegate this out to someone else. So that being the case, uh, a user plus subscriber sees this delegate field, and I'm going to select Floella as my delegate, and I'm going to update this step. Now, if I just quickly open it again, you'll see that Floella's name has gone orange. Um, that will go green if Floella accepts the goal, uh, sorry, the step, uh, a red, or a sort of pinky red, if she rejects. So let's log in as Floella and have a look at what she sees. Now we're Floella, I'm going to have a look at my to-do tab, so my list of all the steps that I've got to do, and you can see there's a new button appeared which is delegated to me. So unsurprisingly, if I click on here, I can see the, in this case, just one step that someone else has asked me to take on. Uh, it's orange to show that I need to uh, accept or reject it. So if I open it up, I can have a look and see what information is there. If I need to, I can click on this link here, which will give me the context of the entire goal. So if I click on that, you can see that's all the information I need. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, and I'm happy with that one. So I'm going to accept that step. Great, so now what happens is you'll see it's gone green. Fabulous. And also, uh, because this to-do list here is a list of all of my steps in time order, what we'll find is that down here, do an online search of publishers has a little green dot against it. Now that little dot means this step has been delegated to me and I've accepted it. If that dot was orange, it would be a step which I was uh, I needed to respond to. So that's great. So what I've done here as Floella is I've taken on the step from the, the other goal. So although it's not in one of my own goals, I'm going to do this step. And then let's go back and have a look at what Jane, the person who owns the goal and delegated the step, let's see what she sees. So here's the goal. Here's the step. And now we can see that Floella's name has gone green to show that she's accepted that. And as you might expect, if I look as the person who delegated the step out, if I look at my steps timeline, you can see a little green hollow circle to show that this is a step that I've delegated out and has been accepted. And now delegated steps work just the same as any other steps. They can be completed, they can be updated and so on, and they feed into the goals and the goal progress. But that's how you work with delegated steps.
The second user plus benefit is the info hub, which if you go into the tools tab, you'll see an info hub button. Click there, and now I have access to all sorts of extra reports about my goals. So here, um, this looks like the dash strip along the top of the main user interface, but with a much more vivid uh, colour scheme to let me see uh, which steps I need to concentrate on. So here are my overdue ones here. Um, I've also got uh, a timeline that shows me the, the spread of my goals across time. There's today and I can see that my goals are fairly well spaced out so that's good. Um, but here what we talked about was this idea of cooperation, so comparing goals side by side. So if I look at the people that I support or the people that support me, uh, I can pick one of them and select them. And what Goalstormer does is shows me side by side how we're both getting on. So I can see that me, as Jane here, uh, I'm doing fairly well on most of my goals. I've got the odd thing which is is overdue and I've got quite a few goals going on. So when I look at Fluella, I can see that she's um, she's achieved quite a, a bit on this goal here. In fact, everything she needs to do, um, but is, is fail, falling behind a little bit on this Christmas event thing. So I can either give uh, Fluella some encouragement or a bit of banter to say, come on, we should be, uh, you know, you, you should be catching up with me. I'm doing much better here. Uh, and so what we're doing is, is this combination of um, cooperation and competition, this cooperation that we call about, to try and get people to self-motivate self -motivate within their own groups so that you as a, as a coach, a manager or a mentor can, um, can kind of take a step back and, and advise on how people should move forward. But these sorts of tools allow you to, to get that, that spirit of competition amongst your team so that each person grows quicker and more effectively. Having a documentation trail, a trail of evidence that uh, that shows progression over time can sometimes be very useful. Uh, it can, for example, uh, track and illustrate the difference that your support has made to people, to individuals or to groups uh, because they're achieving things earlier or they're, they're achieving bigger things. So if you want to do that in Goalstormer, um, here's the, the approach that I suggest to keep it really simple. The first thing is to make sure that you've got your agreed initial goals set up with the user and all in Goalstorm are broken down into steps with dates that everyone's happy with. And then what you do is you go into the Pro Hub and you generate an ad hoc report which you then save as a baseline and say this is what we agreed on day one. Uh, and then what you do is you schedule the regular reports, whether that's every month or two months or three months or six months or whatever, and you'll receive those by email. And then having these emailed PDFs alongside the baseline now gives you your evidence trail uh, for progress over time. So let's have a look at how we do that in practice. To generate our documentation trail with a user, the first thing to do is to make sure for the goals that we're interested in, under the settings tab here, that we as the coach, as the as the mentor, as the manager, have been selected in the with coach field. So just make sure that for all the goals that you're interested in tracking, uh, that's set within the user account. So now that we've done that with Floella's goals here, let's have a look at how we generate that evidence trail. Now as the coach and mentor, I'm in the Pro Hub. I go to the users menu and progress reports. And this is where I see all of the users that uh, I'm helping or um, mentoring or coaching with their goals. So I've been selected as, as the coach in that, uh, that uh, selector field there. So Fluella is the person that we're interested in. So we've just agreed a whole load of goals with Fluella. What we want to do is establish our baseline report. So we just click the preview button here and that generates us a nice um, printable report uh, that we can walk through uh, and discuss with Fluella. But what we're going to do this time around is um, use the file menu and then print. Uh, I'm using a Mac here, um, but it's similar on, on the PC. Here I've got as destination save as PDF. On a PC that would be save as an XPS file. Uh, and I'm just going to save that um, into a, a known location and that gives me now my first ever baseline for uh, Floella and her goals. Now obviously everything there will be pretty much on time and not started, but at least it tells me things like the, um, the due dates for all of the different steps and goals. So that's my baseline. Now, uh, what I then do is click on the schedule button and decide, let's have a look, let's say it's going to be the, about the mid-month and it's going to be every two months and I 
saved there and that tells me the next report is due out on the 14th of November and I'll get it every two months after that. Now what's going to happen here is that Goldstormer will email me a PDF of that report. Actually it's a slightly simplified format to make it smaller in your inbox but basically you're now every two months going to get an update to the progress for those uh, goals and steps and if there are any date changes because things have been pushed back or pulled in or what have you. So together, taking together the initial baseline that you generated and printed as a PDF, plus these emails that you're going to get every one month or two months or whatever you choose, you now have a PDF-based evidence trail of how Floella has been getting on with the goals that you're helping her with. Goldstormer generates standardised progress reports which are driven from the data in the system about the goals and steps that people have been working on and achieved. So how can you use these reports in your reviews to stimulate discussion? Well, the first thing is, when you've got the report on screen, once you've clicked the uh, preview button, you'll see an eye tab, a little a sort of semicircle tab at the top. Click on that and you'll get instructions for how to use the report. So if you ever need to refer to them, click on that on screen and you'll see them. There are three main sections within the report. The top part deals with momentum and engagement and how the user for whom the report has been generated, how they are engaging with their goal. Are they are they doing little and often or are they doing a very sort of peaky um, work on their goals? The second section is about their goals, which ones are overdue, which ones are live and which ones are postponed. And then the third section is the steps in great detail. Now, I will show you this on screen and we'll talk through the colour coding, but basically we're looking at things which have been done but late, done early or done on time, and then things which are overdue or things which are forthcoming. Uh, so let's just have a look at one of those reports on screen and discuss how the information that's presented can be interpreted back to the user when you're meeting with them and what sort of questions it can raise so that you can introduce more value as a coach, mentor or manager. As a quick reminder, to get to the reports, click on the Users menu and then Progress Reports, and then we're interested in, in this case, uh, Floella and Preview. So here is the main report. Here's your top section of the report, which is all about momentum and, and where this user is. So you can see they've got one overdue goal, um, none done late, one live, none done on time, none done early and none postponed. So this is the, the start of the conversation about how people are doing with delivering against their accountability objectives. So are they managing to achieve things? Are they do, achieving them but late or early? Uh, and then we move on to the momentum chart here, which what you're looking for here is are there spikes and troughs uh, as in here? Because we can see this is the, the course of 30 days, so perhaps um, about uh, 25 odd days ago there was a peak here and then nothing was done, then another peak of activity and then nothing was done, then a little bit of work and then a, a bigger bit of work about a week and a bit ago. So what this is suggesting to me is that Floella here uh, has time that she puts aside to mark off the work that she's done and um, to, to indicate that she's engaging with this goal probably once a week or so. Uh, if you had this line being completely flat and then a huge spike at the end just before review time, you know that what people are doing is not moving forward with their accountability and then at the last minute that shoots up as they realise they've got to do their homework before they become a meet teacher. So this little chart here allows you to explore how people are planning and managing their time around what they've chosen to be accountable for. So the next section is goals. So again, we just split them down into three. We've got overdue, live and postponed. Anything that's achieved, by the way, isn't on this report because this is about the stuff that people are working on right now. What we're looking at is the overall progress. That's the indicator bar here. Um, and we can see, for example, this write a great poem uh, goal here. It looks like all the steps are done, but the goal's not been closed yet. So we might want to ask uh, Floella, you know, what is it that makes you feel you can't mark this goal as achieved yet? Are you not happy? Do you feel that there are some extra steps that should be in there? Um, because you're, you're past your, your due date for this goal. So so let's have a talk about that. Um, we can also see that uh, it's it's a Christmas event here. 25th of December is, is the, the, um, the deadline for this live goal. Uh, there's some progress being made, so that's fine. We could say there are only, I think at the moment eight or nine weeks to go until Christmas, so really should should this be over here somewhere and what would help you move uh, this goal further forward so we can have a, a, a big picture view, uh, conversation about the goals that this user has committed to. And at the moment, nothing postponed. Um, the reason you might be interested in postponed is if um, 
you have a user who wants to to boil the ocean, you know, they want to do loads and loads and loads of stuff and they want to try and do everything at once. Um, now, we as coaches and mentors know that that can sometimes be difficult to achieve and you're better to pick two or three things at most and focus on those. So having the postpone section here allows you to have that, that mentoring conversation or that training conversation about not trying to do everything at once and perhaps some of these goals as complete entities should be postponed for later. The third area is the detail of the steps across all of the different goals and this is in date order uh, again, so earliest at the top, latest at the bottom. And we use the same colour coding as uh, the goal uh, segment, the donut chart, chart at the top. So remember this, this chart up here. So we use that same colour coding down here. So I can see, for example, that Floella here has um, achieved four steps, this green one and three orange ones. Uh, and that's telling me that she's either achieving them late, that's what orange means, or she's been a bit ambitious with the, the original deadlines and due dates that she set. So if you see someone who's got lots and lots of orange here, then the chances are they're being optimistic with the deadlines or they're not managing to put the time aside. So it means they are getting through the work, but not on time. Conversely, if you've got someone who's got a lot of dark green, that means that they're achieving too easily. They're doing everything early, so they're perhaps being a little bit uh, lax with their deadlines or a bit gentle on themselves um, or maybe they're just super, super efficient. Ideally, what you're looking for is the light green that says stuff's been done on time. Anything which is overdue is red, and again, you can see the, the progress for open steps, whether they're overdue red or live blue. So it, it also means that you've got a good picture of, of how much has been done for the overdue steps and what's coming up and whether there's any work being done ahead of time to try and spread the load of work. If you've got a number of people within your organization that you want to have uh, upgraded subscriptions for, so that could be managers or coaches or mentors who need pro subscriptions, or maybe junior managers or team leaders or supervisors um, or advanced users who want a user plus subscription, there is a way to centrally manage these so that you're not having to deal with lots and lots of expense claims um, and uh, different uh, end dates for, for licenses and so on. And that's the central uh, subscriptions license agreements within Goldstormer. So um, these use the groups within Goldstormer and what you can do is you can pick uh, one or more groups and you can nominate those groups to be license groups for a particular period of, of time uh, for a license level, either user plus or pro. Benefit of that, of course, it means that you're in control of the spend. Uh, you can decide how long these licenses last for, who gets them, and how many you have. And the idea behind Goldstormer license agreements is that they're, they're very flexible. So if, for example, you have um, 10 people for six months, and you, your team doubles in size to 20, you can actually uh, grow the number of licenses and reduce the time, so 20 licenses over three months. Conversely, if you start out with your um, 10 uh, people who are licensed for six months and your team shrinks to five, you can then take that same license agreement, make it for five licenses, but stretch it out to 12 months. So um, basically, it's completely flexible for the numbers that you've got and the amount of time that you want to use it for. So let's have a look at how they work in practice and I hope show you how they make it much, much easier to manage the bulk licenses that you need in, in order to make Goldstormer really, really effective in your organization. Right here, let's look at licensing agreements. Licensing agreements uh, work with groups. Um, you can either reuse an existing group or you can set up a group specifically to give people licenses. So let's have a look at, um, at both of those. So we'll click on the groups menu and license groups. Now, I don't have any at the moment, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new agreement here for my, um, let's say I run an incubator, incubator mentors, and I want to give them pro level subscriptions. So I've uh, set up uh, a group for pre-startup mentors and advisors, and I'm going to give them a pro license, and I want that to last for uh, a year, let's see, so that's 12 whole months. Goldstormer calculates dates from the start of October to the end of September, so that's that's a year. And I've only got one member in the group just now, you can see from this pull down here, but I know that I've got a few more coming on board, so I'm going to do uh, five uh, mentors. And actually, you know what, I'm only going to do it for six months um, because I want to try all this first, so we'll go until the end of March. So there we go. Um, and if I want to put some notes in here, uh, this is for trialing our new mentoring program. 
So then what we can do is we can calculate the price that will be needed uh, to pay. And there's a couple of um, notes here. It just says that if we change this group here, uh, the original group will lose the licenses. In other words, we can take this agreement and apply it to another group, but that original group will, of course, lose their licenses that we've bought them. Uh, just another little note that reminds you of what I said earlier, that Gold Summer works, from, uh, works on calendar months, so it's adjusted the dates for us to make sure that we were aware of that. And then it gives us uh, the, the cost that it will take to buy all of these licenses for all of that period of time. So um, if we want to change anything, if I say, well, actually, do you know what, that's, that's great, but I'm going to have eight um, mentors now. I can recalculate the price, and then as when I'm happy and I've got everything done, I can click Buy Now, and then this is where we go to um, the Buy page, and when I click Buy Now here, I'll be taken to uh, PayPal, and that's where I can put in my payment details. And as soon as that's all agreed, then um, the license agreement uh, takes effect, and now uh, th this will come into play. So you can see I've gone back to the Pro Hub, and this is my license agreement here. Um, I've got a little uh, bar chart that tells me how many of the, the licenses are, are being used, um, and um, that goes red when I'm within um, a few licenses of, of running out. So I'll show you that in just a little second. So in the best traditions of TV, uh, here's one I prepared earlier to show you the bar charts. If I click on groups and then manage groups, so these are um, groups here which have license agreements attached to them. So this is another user here, but you can see that two thirds, two of the three uh, licenses have been used. So I've got an orange bar chart here, uh, whereas this test group here it's only got one license and it's used so that there's 100% usage that's gone pink. Uh, otherwise, that would be a little white bar chart um, showing me how many of these licenses have been used. So for any of the groups that you have which have licenses associated with them, you'll see this additional row here giving you information on the license. And you can edit um, the, the license in there by just clicking on the little bar chart and that takes you into here. And that is how you manage any number of license agreements for any number of groups. So I could add as many groups as I want here for different user plus or pro licenses and manage them all from in here. And I can edit the licenses here. Uh, I can calculate new prices if I want to extend them. And um, I can even change the groups that the licenses apply to. So if I wanted to change them, the licenses from one program to another, I can do that completely flexibly. Well, I hope that was really useful for you. Now here's the thing, if you're not already a pro subscriber, whether you ever buy anything again from me or not, please do register for a Goldstormer account and use it for your own goals and test me on this. I'm going to show you how to try every pro feature for free for 60 days and you can go out and do this right now. And please remember, this is not just theory, it's exactly what I do to support and manage my mentoring clients. It's exactly the same principle as well if you've got established processes or if you're new to this and want to develop your own systems. So what's it really all about? Well, it's about freedom to use your time the way that you want to efficiently. It's about boosting your profitability and having more of a life. It's about making a difference to more people with your experience and knowledge. It's about doing that without having to have that, that awkward time on the phone or nagging people and chasing them by email. It's about making time with people much more valuable by focusing on them, not administrative tasks like form filling. Now, I'm not exactly sure why you're watching right now. Um, it might be because you're fed up of the effort it takes to run your coaching or consulting business when really you want to focus on the human contact. It might be because you want to coach and manage your staff more proactively but feel that you're really struggling for time. It might be that you want to start a coaching business and need a quick, easy way to get going, not spending hours chasing updates when you should be selling and talking and engaging. So if that's the case, I hope that you really get this one thing, that you can use Goldstorm as a platform to grow your business and make a bigger impact on more people with what you know, just like I've done. I took what I knew about getting groups of people to achieve and I made it into a system, Goldstormer, so that you can do the same. So I guess the obvious question is, how do I take what I offer, my mentoring or management stuff, and get more and more people using it? You have a choice. You can do it slow. You can use trial and error like I did to start with. Lots of notes, phone calls, emails, Excel spreadsheets. Or you can do it quickly using the experience that we've designed and built into Goldstormer Pro. Einstein famously said that everything in life should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. 
and that's what we're aiming for. Goalstormer Pro is designed to give you a platform, everything that you need to support people with goals and ambitions. It's a place to systemize and organize your offerings. It's a place to engage with your clients or your staff. And it's a place to collate and pull together all that progress data. It generates automated reports that save you time. It gives you interactive dashboards and simple charts that give you insight quickly. Basically, it's a super fast way to get from just having great ideas and experience through to having happy people in a scalable, growing and manageable business. Basically, it helps you do this, navigate a route through the landscape to where you want to be, rather than this, just taking a leap of faith. So what exactly is Goalstormer Pro? It's web software in two main modules, the Goalstormer normal user interface and the Pro Hub designed for coaches and mentors. It's available all the time through your web browser, there's nothing to install or update. And it comes with built-in help tips and help screens and support email. And crucially, nothing's left out. Goalstormer Pro subscribers get all the platform features. The Goalstormer web app, well, you could use it for your own goals as well as for your clients. Use the system the way your clients do, become their trusted guide and advisor, hold yourself to account, or work with your own mentor. Goalstormer Pro also allows you to create and publish templates. These give easy access to your knowledge and offerings even when you're not around, which is another potential source of leads. You can mix private and published templates, which allows you to attract using um, public templates and maybe up or cross-sell using private templates. It's about trading value to help people see why they should engage more with you and get onto your paid programs. Goalstormer Pro also gives you groups. You can set up groups of users organized by interest or location, whether that's geographical or their position in the company org chart. You can uh, organize by intake if you run a regular program or whatever you want to do. And you can use these groups to let people access your added value content, your templates and web resources. You can send quick updates to just the members of a group within Goalstormer to streamline your communications. And of course, you can track progress and analyze performance on a group by group basis. As a pro, you can set up license agreements for other users. So this means that you can provide licenses to users that you pick for as long as you decide so you can build your own community and it gives people another reason to stick with you. There are lots of resources to help you and your users learn how to use Goalstormer to best effect. For users, look for the help tips with the little green circles which open up help screens. That helps users get to grips with things fast. We've got webinars with detailed user guides so that you can learn what you need at your own pace. There are lots of tips videos which are available for quick reminders or ideas for doing new things. And we've got an ebook coming up called Gorilla Goalstormer, Seven Steps for Busy Mentors to Build Brilliant People, which pretty much does what it says on the tin. So how much will Goalstormer cost you? Well, bear in mind that if you were to engage me on a consulting basis, depending on the number of days, it'd be a minimum of £1,050 uh, for each day. Our typical projects are sort of five to 25000 can go up to as high as sixty or 70000 for big projects, but we're usually booked several months ahead. And as well as all of the years spent building my experience, I've spent several thousand development hours bringing Goalstormer from concept to reality. You'll be pleased to know that Goalstormer will cost you a tiny fraction of those figures. In fact, you can get started today for £240. That immediately gets you all the pro features, and that's for a whole year. And of course, you can try all this for free for 60 days first. But do please decide soon, because we're going to be moving to a monthly fee model in 2016, and so the annual bundle price will no longer be available. And of course, you'll be getting much more for your business too. You'll be getting efficiency because you're making your knowledge repeatable, write once and use many times. You'll have a hands-off marketing tool. Your free templates, for example, can generate warm leads. You can build communities of brand advocates with groups and updates. And as well as saving your own time, you'll save clients time because their data is all in one place too. There are no lengthy phone calls that you've got to chase to try and get them to remember what they were doing when you last talked. And if you help businesses that you work with improve their accountability with Goalstormer, then that can get you involved in bigger projects where you make a greater impact and are perceived and genuinely do create higher value. And referral fees, which are part of Goalstormer, can build a new revenue stream for your business. Now, you can get these slides and more at web.goalstormer.com slash learn. So let's sum up. If you want to systemize your processes and help more clients achieve more things that matter without wasting valuable time on admin tasks, then this is the ideal platform for you. 
It's a blend of people, process and technology capabilities and I've built exactly what I needed when I started. This would have saved me weeks getting started and hours every week. And remember, you get all of the features plus email support in the Pro subscription. So to get started right now, go to this page, www.goldstormer.com slash gsregister.php, register for your account, and then look at the top right hand corner or on the confirmation screen for the upgrade button and click that. When you click the upgrade button, you'll see the upgrade page on the left here. And you can either click on the try for 60 days link, it says 30 here but it's 60 now, so try for 60 days link, or you can click on the upgrade to pro button. Now if you click the upgrade to pro button, then you'll see this PayPal page on the right hand side. And you'll see Critical Action Limited at the top, that's our parent company, and that's the name that will appear on your PayPal invoice. So go through the PayPal process and that upgrades your account. Perhaps you're not completely convinced yet that Goldstormer is exactly right for your business. Well, that's why we give you all of the pro features for free for 60 days. And we're not going to take any payment details in order to get those 60 days, because if you don't see the value for your business, there's nothing more to do. There's no cancellation email to send. There's no ac action that you need to take. But even then, of course, you can still use Goldstormer standard for yourself, for free, with our compliments, for your own goals. But after 60 days, if you do like it, then yeah, go ahead, buy a pro subscription. You get immediate access following https colon slash slash www.goldstormer.com slash gsregister.php. That allows you to register for an account so you can click on the upgrade button on the confirmation screen or at the top right of the web app when you're logged in so that you can upgrade to a pro subscription.